Coming up, could this really be the future of the motel business? The cleaners will be encouraged to engage with guests. Doesn't make sense, I'm sorry. Have you run a hotel before? No. Next, into the tank, an aspiring property developer planning to move in to the motel business. I've identified a real gap in the market and I believe my business will sell itself to the sharks because it's such a good idea. Hi, my name is Bryce McDougall and my business will be known as Bryce's. I'm seeking $1.98 million to be treated as a loan. This will be repaid in full with interest within five years and you'll receive an ongoing 45% share in the business. I discovered a real lack of good accommodation throughout rural New South Wales and I'll be building and operating a chain of brand new studio apartment motels throughout the state. The first property will be in Gunnedah. I've secured a beautiful piece of land within walking distance of the CBD. Traditional motels in the country were often built in the 50s and 60s. They're on highways, frequently with rooms that face a car park or a fence. When guests walk into their room at Bryce's, there'll be a wow factor. Wow, this feels really good. My target market are business guests, salespeople, traveling around the state doing sales calls. Competitive advantages will be brought to the business by centralizing management. Guests will receive an SMS on the day of arrival with a room number and PIN number. And just like frequent flyers like to bypass check-in at the airport, regular business guests at Bryce's will love that they can proceed directly to their room. And your $1.98 million will see Bryce's Gunnedah open within six months with eight units. But there is excellent opportunity for growth as hopefully we expand throughout New South Wales. Thank you, Bryce. And just to confirm, that's $1.98 million as a loan. I'm proposing 5% interest, so 2.5% above the Reserve Bank. That's fine. I'm just confirming I'm not negotiating. Certainly. Yep. So the loan will be repaid and then the person lending you the money will be left with 45% of your company. That's correct. Okay. Bryce, why $1.98 million? It's an odd number. Um, I just recall my solicitor saying you need to be able to uh, just bring it in at under two million. Bad advice. If you're approaching a high net worth individual, you can be any amount you want. Yeah. Tell me why only eight? Because I happen to be in the hotel business and eight is not a number that's normally considered viable. You're right, eight is not viable. With eight units, it doesn't make very much money. It pretty much just covers expenses. How on earth do you expect to repay the debt? What's that, sorry? The... I don't know how you can pay the loan off in five years. The plan is to expand. It really needs to have 16 units to be viable. The plan is to submit a DA uh, for another eight units as soon as I'm open, and then the turnover should be approximately 700,000 a year with 16 units. And how much a night do you think you'll get? 165. I'm working at 80% occupancy. Yeah, nobody works at 100%. Yeah, yeah. Have you run a hotel before? No. Mm. I'm a bit of an aficionado when it comes to hotels. 20 years as a flight attendant, I've stayed in an awful lot of hotels, and there's just so many things that they don't get right that are so easy to fix. We used to queue up for our keys, that used to drive me nuts. But if you've got the room number and the access code, and you can let yourself straight into the room, that's fantastic. With eight rooms, I don't think they're gonna be lining up at the reception. It's about cutting, cutting costs. How much research have you done on the people don't want to check in? Because I actually find sometimes when I go, it's good to find out, you know, where's the best place to eat around here, give us some directions. Customer service um, will be carried, um, carried out by me. Guests will be able to pick up the phone 24-7. It'll go through to reception. It just so happens that reception won't be there. The cleaners will be encouraged to engage with guests. I think the whole concept will actually be an improvement. What 
research have you done to know that there's even a market for this? You know, a lot of people say, yeah, when I travel around the state, there is nowhere good to stay. But that's not really research, that's hearsay. People will pay a lot more than an extra five or ten dollars for what they're going to get at prices. So what you're saying is you haven't done any structured research to say that the consumer wants it? You've said, I think, people here think, but you haven't really done any, any definitive research. Not as such, I don't think. I'm not sure what you mean exactly by definitive research. Bryce, this is not an investment for me. I'm out. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to let you know where I'm at. Um, I'm not really into the real estate thing, to be honest. Um, it reminds me of a single man's mining camp. I actually think the representation you've got there doesn't do it probably what, what, just as what's in your head. Yep. To me, it looks like a, a bunch of ATCO huts. They so, look fantastic in the flesh. When I went to Melbourne to... Fantastic. From that picture, which is all you've got to show on us, they look like, you know, wood-clad ATCO huts. So it's not my thing, mate. I wish you all the best when I'm out. I think your greatest problem is marketing. The cost for you to keep that at 80% or more occupancy, I think, is going to eat up all your profits. Yes, it's not going to make a lot of money until there's a second and a third and a fourth property. The question is, are you really going to get there? Are you going to get to second, third and fourth before you run out of cash? I think from an investment, it's difficult, so I'm out. OK, thanks, John. There is no doubt that better accommodation in regional areas is absolutely needed. My concern is I don't think you've got the numbers right. So for that reason, I'm out. You know the big hotel operators, like Accor, do you know what they pay building owners as a return just for the use of the building and they run the hotel? No. Between 7 and 9%. In 10 years, you get your money back. Right. So to put two million bucks into something which is sort of an unknown, that's an interesting risk. If you also look around the country, there are some lovely motels, but they're run by families and personalities. That's what makes them able to survive, a bit like independent movie theatres. So I wish you luck, but I think keep it as a boutique model if you can get the funding and love it to death, as you obviously do. But as a business model, it, it doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, I'm out. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, everyone. Good to meet you. We'll get there one way or the other. Yeah, yes. you will. Keep you will. Going. Thank you. I've got a great idea and I'm convinced it will work. So I'll be out there again hitting the pavement and seeking an investor to come on board. Interesting. Well, I think there is a little bit of demand for it, but I don't think he's going to get there. He's actually building cabins and he's passing them off as actually quality accommodation. Look at it. It looks like a demandable school building. I don't know the inside look. I quite like the look of that. And they've got velvet cushions in there. Next into the tank are Janet and her auntie Annie. They're hoping their unique gadget will tease a deal from a shark. We think that this product is going to be so successful and change so many women's lives. It does have a huge potential to go global. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Janet, and this is my auntie and business partner, Annie. And we are HTZ Hair Revolution. And we have a product to show you today, which is called the HTZ Hot Teas. Our product is about making hair more voluminous. It works by giving texture to the roots of the hair. It's a heated hair appliance. It's very easy to use. And it's a fantastic, fast and efficient tool. It's been designed um, by Anne herself, who is an experienced hairdresser. Basically, it's used for hair like mine, uh, which would be like that without it. It gives a little bit of texture to the base of the roots. It's not like a crimping iron. A crimping iron is a V shape. It has little square shapes, which is four points of crease instead of two points of crease, which makes it denser and less noticeable. And in my 50 years of hairdressing, nothing has ever given me, because it's very thin, Nothing has given me hair that I can go like that and it will just still have body and that's what I've been looking for. 
what we are looking for from a shark is $500,000 for 5%. Jesus. Your request was for $500,000 for 5%, valuing your business at $10 million. Wow. Is that correct? That's serious. Yes, that's, that's big, and we look forward to seeing it. So would you like to demonstrate your product so yes. that we can see it? Can I do somebody's head? Would you sure. Like? It's been the, the long, thick hair. Do you get your hair done very often lately, or what? Every day. The mane's not going to fall out, is it? <laughs> no. Janet, can I just clarify something? Is this a replacement for a a curling iron or a hair straightener, or is it something completely different? Well, we designed this as a volumizer, and that was solely what it was meant to be, but you can also do your ribbon curls and everything, much like a hair straightener. What are you spraying into our roots? Uh... Hair remover. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so with this root lift spray oh. is a light hairspray. So does this come with the product? It comes with a 60ml version of the root lift spray, which is actually manufactured here in Australia. It doesn't actually feel like it's got anything in it. <laughs> it's a bit scary, isn't it? Oh, dear. OK, no, Let's that get is... a uh, <laughs> fire extinguisher. Quick, a fire blanket. Bring a fire blanket. <laughs> I can see smoke. So I'm sizzling. There is smoke coming off your head. It's just that I'm not going to wait for the spray to dry. All hot irons do that if you have wet spray. <laughs> Don't laugh. Stop laughing. Can't take you seriously, sorry, Janine. I couldn't take you seriously before getting your hair done. Now getting your hair done, I can't take you seriously at all. What do you sell them for? OK, online we sell them at 245 we are trying to encourage people to come and see us at our pop-up shops and our expos and all that sort of thing. So when we do something like that, we do a promo price of $195. So a $10 million valuation. So what are your sales to date? Sales to date is 208. 208 units. So then how do you justify the $10 million valuation? So, well, what we've done is, with each pop-up shop, we have sold lots, and we've made our money back. Hang on. Lots. Lots? You've only sold 208. I'm shocked. $10 million valuation is complete garbage. Janet and Annie have invented a gadget that gives hair more volume. But as Janine's locks get bigger, so do the holes in Janet and Annie's business model. So a $10 million valuation, so what are your sales to date? Sales to date is 208. So then how do you justify the $10 million valuation? I'm shocked. 10 million bucks and you got nothing. You're 208 sales. You're going to be doing pop-up shops the rest of your life to try and justify a $10 million valuation. I just don't understand how I can invest in something which has, you know, you've sold 208 of these and we don't have a business plan and it's a $10 million valuation. It's sort of a bit cheeky, don't you think? Who, where or what has this valuation come from? Did you do it or did you get help with the valuation? I did get help from uh, my friend who's an accountant. Oh God, get a new accountant. So he's basing that on what we assume we'll be doing at... We've got three expos booked for this year already. Janet, he's a bloody idiot. To give you a valuation of $10 million to come into the tank, and you know, you've watched this show, you knew we weren't going to be happy. Yeah, but look how I look. Isn't it worth it? <laughs> I have to say, Janine looks amazing. Do I look like I'm back to the 80s? She looks like Wonder Woman. It's... <laughs> That's what she reminds me of. It's Wonder Woman. It... No, it's, it's voluminous. No, yeah. It's good. It's good. Thank you very much. It's amazing. <laughs> what do you think, Len? Oh, it looks great. Annie and, and, and Janet, look, um, I'm not your ideal customer for this sort of thing. I don't quite understand what it is. But I think you need to seriously look at that $10 million valuation you've stuck in there, because I think you'll come unstuck on that today. I'm out. I, I wish you all the best. Thank you. I, I must admit, it does bother me watching my daughters go and, and go, I'm waiting for the hair to fall out. Hair's very resilient, believe me.
Um, I'm worried about the $10 million valuation. Whoever helped you with that has done you a massive disservice. Uh, I'm out. Thank you. You need to work with a company that will make and distribute this for you locally and globally. That's the way to go, not selling it at pop-up stores. And the other thing is, change your accountant, because whoever gave you the $10 million valuation in a way set you up to fail today. I'm sorry, I wish you luck. You've got a product, keep going, but it's not an investment for me. I'm out. OK, thank you. Do you know what I love about you two? Most people talk about doing something and you've done it. You have bought a product to market. However, you're playing in a very big, scary ocean with big competitors. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? You've come up with a great idea but you're not necessarily business people, and that's okay. Either was I when I started, I had to learn. So tick, exposure, tick. You've got a great product, well done. And you're passionate about it, and it's you love it. But the $10 million valuation means it's uninvestable. I'm sorry, I'm out. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the hair. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, Annie. I think the root lift spray is amazing. Look at that, it's amazing. It's over. <laughs> we did our best. Yeah. Plan A. Plan A, back to plan A. I think if your husband was watching now, he'd be <laughs> very keen to see you, darling. What are you, Mon um, Chérie? Oh, you look like that is amazing. <laughs> Coming up, an entrepreneur who just wants to have fun. So who wants the party? But are the sharks party poopers? Eight million dollars is a totally absurd valuation. Next to break the shark tank, an entrepreneur hoping to move his family business into the big league. If I got investment today from the sharks, it would, it would basically push us forward much, much faster than we would have otherwise. Hi there, sharks. My name's Dean Salakis. And I'm the chief party dude of the party people. I'm looking for a shark to come to the party with $400,000 for 5% of my company. It all began 30 years ago with my mum, who was Patches the Clown, catering for kids' parties all over Sydney. Her passion for kids' parties led her to open a small little party shop with my grandfather. Seven years ago, my brother and I took over the family business so that my mum and grandfather could retire. Our operation consists of an internet business and two retail stores. Our Dremoyne store opened about three years ago and sales in its first year were about a million dollars. Since then, we've been growing at about 20% and this is a type of success we'd like to replicate to create a national chain of party stores. In the party supplies industry, there's no top of mind party supplies retailer and I believe the party people is in the perfect position to take this opportunity and create a national chain of party stores. I've got the best job in the world. I get to have fun every day, it's exciting, and I get to help people create the parties that they dreamed about. So who wants the party? <laughs> oh, I, knew, I knew something was going on. Right. Whoa. It was Evelyn. Surprise. Oh, you got left out. Sorry, sorry Steve. Happy we're out. Would you like some stuff inside each of these? Do we get to keep it if we invest you or not, do. Dean? That's the question. <laughs> you get to keep it either Thanks, way, actually. You can, keep the, you can keep what's in the box. <laughs> do, do I have to wear the coconut bikini top? Just check it. Option. Option. Right, OK. <laughs> John reminds me of the tax department. <laughs> I've given John a money bag, actually. John's got a money bag. It's empty, though. That's the problem. Oh. <laughs> hey. He wants you to fill it up. That's the point. And how did you know Naomi was our princess? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky guess. Who owns the company, mate? Do you? Uh, I own 50%. Yeah. And my brother owns the other 50%. Oh, no, 50 50. So $400,000 for 5%. That's the value proposition. Yes. A big valuation. Yeah. I mean, if you're asking an $8 million valuation, you must be earning plenty of revenue and profit. 
total revenue is about 4.1 million last year. Um, our profit is around about 400,000. So it, you, you made 400,000 before tax last year. Yes. What are you going to make next year? Because that's how I'm going to value your business. Next year, we should um, make around about 450,000 profit. What, what, only 10% more than this year? Sorry, sorry, about 500, sorry, about 20%. So why are you worth 30 times this year's numbers? Um, so you're asking why are we valuing it at, say, yeah. 8 million, for example? Um, I think it's a really good business. I think we're ready to explode, and I think that, you know, we've, we've laid the foundation, basically, to, to, to scale this yeah, thing. Yeah, but even still, if you, if, you look at your, if you look at next year with investment, you'll be doing 600K. That's net profit yeah. before tax. Yeah. Pay the tax man. So you're left with 400K. Yeah. So then you're valued at 20 times. That's, that's a big lick. This is a great business, don't get me wrong, but yeah. this valuation needs to be inspected and looked at quite hard. You do sound very good at running a party shop. Thank you, you. appreciate that. Fundamentally, I'm just, I'm failed to get excited about the party business. I'm gonna say I'm out so you can concentrate on the others because well, I just can't get excited, so I'm out, mate. No worries. You want to raise $400,000. Yep. What are you going to do with it? We're, we're all a little interested in how you think you're going to expand the business and get the best return on that equity investment. Yeah, that's a really good question because we've only got two stores and we're running a business which is really set for 10 stores. Our website, we have customers in Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth that, that basically want, you know, they wish we had a store there, but we don't. So we don't need to do any more marketing. We've already got the marketing. We're already ma ad advertising to these people that go, OK, I found the party people. Oh, they're not here. So coming back to the question, where yeah. do you think you're going to spend the money? Oh, opening more stores. You're heading down the old bricks and mortar. And I think the internet for everything nowadays is really the future. So for me, I think you're actually potentially going down the wrong track. But that's can my I just, view. Can I just jump in if that's all right? I mean, when you, when you organise a party, it's more visual. It's, it's almost like design, you know? You want to you wanna go into a store and pick stuff and have fun with it and enjoy the experience. And I think that's where the opportunity is. Right. I think every time we open a store, we will add 700 to a million dollars worth of turnover for every store we open, basically. Right. And another 100 or 150 to 200,000 yeah. dollars worth of profit for every store okay. we open. What I am concerned about is the 5% your expectations for 5% are just way too high. And you've asked for a lot of money. Yes. I'm out. Yes. Thanks, Naomi. I don't know where you're getting your advice or guidance. Nowhere. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. and that's frankly how it comes across. Now, you can fix that. I, I think you could be on the verge of greatness. But from an investment point of view, it's too much money for too little percentage and, and a very sort of ill-defined return on my investment. Yeah. So I wish you well, but I'm out. Appreciate that. $4 million is good revenue. Mm -hmm. That's the positive. Yes. Um, the rest of it for me, to be quite honest, is not so positive. $8 million is a totally absurd valuation for your business. I'm sorry, but that's okay. the only word I can think of. I don't see this business being worth $8 million today. I don't see this business being worth $8 million in a decade. So I'm out. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Janine? You know, the answer that you gave Steve for the valuation, which was, it is a good business, so it's worth $8 million. Mm. What I would have liked to have heard was, I've done some research into the industry and similar businesses have a multiple of 15, so this is about right. And for me, valuing a business, I look at the profit, yeah. I look at the growth profile, and I put a multiple connected to that growth profile as well as considering the industry standards. So for me, the business is valued around $2 million. Can you come back to me with another offer? She's asking you to negotiate against yourself. How yeah. good is that? 
Of um, course, she's got to because the valuation's ridiculous. Uh, I'd be happy to move to, say, 10%. So $400,000 for 10%? Yep. So four mil val. That's the best I can That's do. That's the best you can do? That's the best I can do. I'm stretching it there. Partners with Janine Ellis. I mean, just think about that one for a second. Forget the equity part. Honestly, just consider what's being brought to the table here, all right? Dean Salakis wants $400,000 for 5% of his party supplies business. Four sharks have left the party. Janine is interested, but she wants a much bigger piece of the cake. I'd be happy to move to, say, 10%. So $400,000 for 10%? Yep. So four mil val. That's the best I can That's do. That's the best you can do? That's the best I can do. I'm stretching it there. Partners with Janine Ellis. I mean, just think about that one for a second. Forget the equity part. Honestly, just consider what's being brought to the table here, all right? Look, I'm sort of squeezing numbers around, but I just... Everything I'm looking at is so far away from your valuation. All the ways I was getting the cat was a valuation of two million. Okay. I, I don't think it's anywhere near four. And also for me, 10%'s not enough as well. I'd really love to work with you. At 10%. No, I'm out. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for coming. Dean, thank you very much. Good luck to you. Good thank luck, you. mate. Cheers. Dodge the bullet. Yeah, but the, the sales are good. Yeah. The return oh, on the store the was is great. really good. He had growth on sales, so it's a growing business. It had it ticked a lot of boxes. Next into the tank is Darwin saleswoman Heidi who's come up with a concept as Australian as the stubby holder. My product is definitely unique. It's something out there that um, should have been invented probably a very long time ago. Every Australian will want one of these if they do enjoy an ice cold drink because this is going to be beneficial to them. Hi, I'm Heidi, and I'm the owner and inventor of the Ice Bucket Skin. We as Australians do enjoy an ice cold drink, and there's nothing better than sharing a bottle with friends. So whether you're out at a venue or at home, to keep the bottle icy cold, we use ice buckets. The problem with the ice buckets is the condensation. Pools all over the table can end up on the floor, which is an OH&S risk. Worst case scenario could be someone slipping over from water on the floor. So, I've invented the ice bucket skin. It is made from a material that is 0.002% impervious to water, thus ridding the condensation problem. The best thing about it after that, though, is it's also available to logo up. So you can have logos, advertising, patterns and designs to appeal to the marketplace out there. Everyone in the home has a stubby cooler. Next thing they'll have at home is going to be the ice bucket skin. So I'm asking for $260,000 for 10% of my business. No. I can sell ice to Eskimos, so I know I can sell this product. So what I need is funding and also your expertise to get this to Australia, and then it will go to the world. OK. Thanks very much, Heidi. Uh, g'day, I'm Steve. How are you doing? Good, thanks, Steve. Um, and so you were looking for $260,000 for 10%? Yes. 2.6 million bucks. Right, we'll get into that a bit later, but what what, uh, what do you do at the moment? You've got a, a job currently? Yes, I'm a full-time job in Darwin and office work at the moment. Um, my background is sales, though. What sort of sales? Um, I was actually the first female car salesperson in Darwin. Mm. The first female car ago. salesperson in Darwin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Well done. So what made you think that I have to solve the condensation on the ice bucket problem? Because when everyone wakes up in the morning and says, <laughs> I have to solve the condensation on the ice bucket problem, right? <laughs> I mean, it's something that's out there that I don't think anyone's actually realised is a problem. So 
For me, going out and enjoying a drink with friends, I sit at a bar or at a table at a restaurant. The ice bucket's in the middle of the table, the water's pooling, it ends up in my lap. Right, so is it actually a problem? <laughs> yes, it is a problem. Well, we'll know if it's a problem if the people in the hotels actually want it. Yes. Mm. So what have they said? I've had nothing but fantastic reviews for the product. So I have basically got about 10 venues in Darwin that have been using it. And I've spoken to the public on many occasions and he is quite in awe of it. Hmm. So Heidi, um, this is your invention. Yes. So what have you done to protect it? Um, so I have a patent on it. Okay. What's the patent over? The patent is money for the material it's made from. Surely there's prior art that's similar to cover a bucket out there. Someone out can go out there and make another, like a stubby cooler skin for an ice bucket out of neoprene or something like that. Mm -hmm. But out of this material here that I've chosen, oh, EVA. I think that paint attorney has done you a massive disservice. And to all paint attorneys out there, stop it. <laughs> for God's sake, stop ripping off entrepreneurs. You can't paint in simple shit. How much did he charge you for it? Um, I just went online and did it. It was under $500. You did it yourself? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, paint attorneys. That's all done. <laughs> You've done so well. <laughs> so how many have you sold? I had a 1,000 of them made from China, brought them into Darwin. So you ordered a 1,000 before you tried and tested the product? I had tried and tested my prototypes at home. Right. But I ordered a 1,000 in because I wanted to get them into some venues and see how they went. So how many of the 1,000 have you sold? I only sold 200 of them. OK. And about 100 actually given away as well. Uh oh. So you've got 700 left in stock? Yes. Heidi, I get that you want some help. But how do you value your business at 2.6 million when you've sold 100, given away 100, <laughs> it's been going two years and you've still got seven in stock? I mean, I mean, is there some magic formula to this? Is there something we're not seeing? The magic formula hasn't happened yet because what's happened is... Please explain. I had to have it tried and tested first. So in my head, I knew that this product was saleable and that I was confident yes, selling it. Yes, the 2.6 million I'm yep, talking the 2. about. the 2.6 million. So I've been to an accountant. Oh, no. No, no, no. And All he's right. actually drawn oh, up my well. figures. Oh, don't do it. That changes everything. No, but I had to have him work out figures. He said to me, um, basically, um, I can sell at least 100,000 in the first year. So, Heidi, I'm still waiting for the justification of the 2.6 million valuation because you did your spreadsheet with your accountant. Yep. But do you have a purchase order? No, I don't. It's, you've got so many there you could have sold already. When someone says to you, business is worth 2.6 million, and I don't have really a firm purchase order, that's correct, surely yeah. if you have this screaming voice that says to you, that sounds like bullshit. Heidi has invented a stubby holder for ice buckets. The sharks like the idea, but her numbers are full of holes. When someone says to you, business is worth 2.6 million, and I don't have really a firm purchase order, That's correct, surely yeah. if you have this screaming voice that says to you, that sounds like bullshit. OK. <laughs> so why do you think you will sell 100,000? Because it's something that is unique to the market that I know once I get out there and start actually selling the product. And to sell it door to door and individual to pubs and clubs is basically out of the question. It's too much for me to do. When you're an entrepreneur and when you're starting a business, nothing is too much. OK. The reality is what great entrepreneurs do is race around Australia, lock in all the pubs and clubs that are interested in this product. Next thing, you've got an open order for at least 10,000 of them, Yes. job's done, and you're going to have a nice profit margin. Who was the accountant? Is it a suburban accountant, or is it one of the big... big... He's from a worldwide firm. All right, here's a message to those pillocks. Please stop giving unrealistic valuations to entrepreneurs. Get real with your bloody valuations. On that, Heidi... Yes? I'm going to actually declare myself out. Uh, I wish you all the best, and have a good day. No worries. You're a classic entrepreneur, got excited, lots of activity without 
any execution. There is a point in life where you come to where you figure you're ready to do something, and that's the point I'm at now. The last couple of years have been thinking about the product, inventing the product, getting it made, then making sure the product will work. OK, good. It's now my time. You know, a lot of people go have an idea and they spend their whole life having an idea and never doing something about it. So you're right, it's your time. Yes. You've just started on your journey, your business journey. You don't know yet what you don't know, but your accountant has done you a disservice. Yeah, because you've relied on him as an expert to give you advice and he has given you terrible advice. Terrible. He has made this pitch today for you uninvestable. I'm sorry I'm out. Okay. You've come up with a with a really cracking idea. There's some things that aren't quite working, but so so tell me, how much money have you put into this? Not a lot. Okay. Um, I've only spent probably over ten thousand dollars, so I have not invested a lot of money. But you're after us to invest a lot of money. I know, but you're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> you see, often people come and ask for our money as investors, and yet they don't put their hand in their own pocket and they wouldn't risk their own capital. You've invested $10,000, but would you invest $2.6 in this? Um, you know, I would have to do a lot of work. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of work too. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the point. You know, when somebody comes before us and they won't spend their own money but they're happy to spend ours, it's not the way I want to start a partnership. Yeah. It's not an investment for me. I'm out. OK, thank you. So three sharks are out, you've got two sharks left. I actually love the product. I think it, without any branding on it, it looks very smart sitting on a restaurant table. Yes. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the product. So, so yeah. you know, you've done... Uh, fabulous. And you've yeah. had this innovation, you've got it up, well done. Because that's hard. If you'd turned up on this show with purchase orders for $260,000, I would have been actually interested. You've turned up the day with a great product, but I'm not ready to put my money into your business. I'm out. OK. If you believe someone who gives you a valuation of 2.6 million, then I would worry about you as a business partner because, frankly, it's a ludicrous valuation. I just find it a little bit kind of uh, hard to grasp. I'm out. OK. Good luck, Audrey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for coming to Shark Tank. All right, no worries. See you later. See you. I guess I do have a lot more to learn. I am a salesperson, I'm not a business person, so I need to get a business hat on. I, I took on Steve's persona then, didn't I? I was getting very frustrated. You were getting quite grumpy, Andrew. Grumpy, Andrew. But we got, didn't get grumpy at her, we got grumpy at the situation. Watch this space, you'll be seeing my product out there. There's many entrepreneurs that come into this tank and have fairyland valuations. And the reason being is it's not that they come in here and want to be insulting, they just don't know. They get advice from people who are really outside the square and unfortunately when you're new in business, you're not sure about what advice you should be taking. So I think the advisors are part of the problem there. Next to face the sharks are two Slovakian friends who have brought the latest craze in European fitness to the tank and they're sure it'll take off in Australia. We're expecting a beating frenzy. There's no reason why they shouldn't want to get involved. This is an exciting opportunity for not only for us but for them as well. Hi, my name is Matej Varhalik and this is my business partner Ron Safar. We are co-founders of Speedfeed Australia and we're looking for an investment of $280,000 for 10% in our business. Sharks, this is your opportunity to be involved in next generation of fitness studios. Speedfit is this smart combination of EMS technology, which is electric muscle stimulation, and personal training. It is a worldwide successful concept with over 5,000 gyms. 20 minutes of this workout can be equivalent to hours of exercise without having to lift a single weight. Our target market is busy professionals. It is time poor parents. It is people working through injuries or just anyone looking 
for a effective solution without having to spend too much time on that. We are already the largest EMS personal training studio network in Australia. Today we have five studios in Western Australia. This year we opened three studios just in three days and they were all break even in less than 10 weeks. We're launching franchise very soon. Sharks, this is your opportunity to be involved in next generation of fitness studios. Thank you, gentlemen. And that was $280,000 for 10% of your company, valuing it at 2.8 million. Yes. Um, what is it, sorry? Is it like an electrical pul a pulse through your body? So it's like being tased as you're getting worked out or something, is it, or? Yes and no. <laughs> okay, not as it's bad as a tasing? It's definitely not like being tasered. Okay. Actually, it feels really nice. Can we have a demonstration? Of, yeah, course, of course we could. Yeah, join I'll us. Give I'm gonna go. give it a go. I'm gonna give it a go. Can I get a remote control for Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> this is mine? This is gonna be your best. I'll be back. See you soon. All right, I'm gonna grab yeah, one. Yeah, Glenn. That's it. Yeah, here to go. Thanks, mate. Have you ever seen anything like this anywhere? Yeah, I've seen some Swiss equipment. I haven't seen a process, but I know that this is very big in Europe. Okay. Oh, very right. Unseen okay. for me. This is my first. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing it. All right, you mob, what's going on? Okay. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Oh, look at you. Hey. Hey. Whoa, look looking back. good. Okay, you have a look it's at this. It's all fancy. Whoa! Whoa. Not a national <laughs> television. Sexy. <laughs> okay, don't get carried away. <laughs> don't get carried away. <laughs> Okay, what do we do now? Yeah, next, we we'll plug you in. Good luck, mate. Don't tase me, bro. Oh, no. Ooh, no. Jackie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you had me worried then. <laughs> it starts off as a bit of a tickle, buzzing, pins and needles type of thing, you know? And then it gets the grip of, over your muscle. So you want to feel a grip? A little bit, yes. Okay. Yes, make sure it's comfortable. Grip okay. me, grip me, baby. One and ten up. And tell me stop. Stop. Yeah, it's a keep it. Stop. Oh. It's a real like. Does that tickle? Please, yep. Stop, 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 stop. Feels like King Kong is grabbing you and giving you a bit of a squeeze. <laughs> keep going in. Gonna lean forwards, two, one, tense. So I want to see them nice and high. Anyway, <laughs> can you grow any? So what do you think, guys? How's it feeling? How does that feel? You're getting a workout, yeah? The only problem I have is someone groaning beside me. <laughs> She's not working hard enough. That's it, we need to turn it up, right? Yeah, turn Wait, it up. Wait, I'm higher than you. Yeah, turn her up. Just tase him, just get this... Come on, I want to see him flash. Right Put your moment. back into it. Put my back into it. My God, look at you sweat, Glenn. <laughs> Make sure your weight is on the heel. Two, one, and I'll let you go right here. Well done, well done, guys. Thanks. Well done. Look at you. Yeah, because I'm fit and you're not. I think the other way around, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> OK. We can take you seriously in your wetsuit. <laughs> so, um, you've got a claim there that says 20 minutes once per week. Correct. Fantastic. That sounds like garbage. Seriously? Seriously. There's no claim attached to that, right? Um, it's medical research being done. There's medical research. Yes. Being done, the study. They compare high intensity training session with EMS once in five days. So it's like once a week, compared with two high-intensity training sessions a week. OK, so, so one 20-minute session is equal to two high-intensity interval training it's sessions. a specific study. Um, study that was done. Tell me about the average lifetime value of a customer. How long do they stay? Many of them, we have over 50% of retention rate. 50% retention rate. And most of our clients, over 50%, have annual memberships. So they're paying $50 a week. So your all your clients come once a week? Correct. It's 2,600 a year. You're not going to get people spending that much with you, are you? Oh, my God, yes, yes, you would. Yes, of, of course. course you would. OK, so, so at the end of this financial year, yes. how much revenue do you forecast that you have done? Two millions. OK, now I'm interested. You're making more money than the Beatles at the moment. I mean, come <laughs> on now, guys, what's going on? Are, are, you, are you guys telling us the truth? Best friends, Marte and Ron, have just pitched their business Speed Fit a revolutionary 20-minute, once-a-week exercise regime using electric muscle stimulation. But it has the sharks wondering if it's too good to be true. Are, are, you, are you guys telling us the truth? Of course. <laughs> of course we do. With, with these numbers, you should have been able to walk into a bank and that bank manager would have rolled the red carpet out to you. That, that, that's amazing business. Yeah, I know. We've been told this, yeah. <laughs> we really came here to really look for a to get the expertise, to have someone on board who really can help us to take this business on a different level. Would you go 
to this place once a week, for having been through what you've been through? If I was a young, young working in the city, um, you know, trying to find that time, have no time for fitness, I would, yes. Right. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. I, I, I love it. I actually love the growth. I love the potential. I don't know if I believe it yet. A bunch of risk involved in this, right? An absolute bunch of risk. I want to offer you the 280000 bucks yep. for 40%. Oh, thank you. Being the numbers guy, how do you feel about a $700,000 valuation versus 2.8? Uh, respect it, but yeah. It's undervalued. It's, it's undervalued. undervalued yeah. Yeah. Life's a negotiation, fellas, so don't, don't get too yeah, down hard. I've, 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 I've got two numbers. I've got two numbers written here. Yeah. yeah. So. It's one of those concerns I have is whether this is a fad and, and you will have a short journey and it's all over. I hope not, guys, because I think there is a good place in the market for you guys. And I think the market you're picking is probably right. I just don't believe it myself. So I'm out. Thank you very much, Fairy Deals. Thank you. I'm in Glenn's camp that it may well be a fad. Yes. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'll give you an offer. <laughs> $280,000 for 33%. Thank you. And I'm not dumb money. Yeah. So have you made an offer, Andy? Yeah, what? I'm about to make a decision. Oh. Ah. Andy. Look, I know where you're coming from. You're going to turn him down at 40, her down at 33. I wouldn't have been much higher than 30. And I'll tell you why. I think your business will make money, but I do worry about your ability to execute without a lot of help. So I wish you luck, but I'm out. Thank, Thank you very much. So you got two offers, 33, 40%. What are you doing? Yeah, we'd like to bring them down. <laughs> right, the best old company mate is 31.1%. And it's a market cap of 900K. OK, thank you. There is no way I'm moving. And the reason I'm not moving is that you're, you're buying, actually, expertise, not just about cash. Do you need time in the tank to talk? Yes. Take yeah. a couple of minutes? OK. Thank you very sure. much. Thank you. It's pretty hard to actually get moving. They won't come below 15%. They will come back and take my deal. I tell you now. No, they will they come back they and will take not. my deal. They, they are will not, not stupid people. No, Ticket they won't. on yourself. What's the gut feeling? I'd like her on board. She will help us. I know the expertise. Yeah. And Steve. What is he bring to the table? Yes. And this one will have to be your call. So what's your decision? You have one offer from Steve at 31.1%, one offer from Janine at 33 and a third percent. Uh, based on the both offers and your expertise, we would like to go for Janine. But we really would like to work out on the negotiations in terms of equity of the business. Uh, we can go for 27.5%. 27.5%. It's a fair counter. I'm actually not moving. It's because the numbers that I'm looking at and the risk still ahead of you warrants the valuation I've put forward. Oh, we're talking about the numbers they're doing in five months of operations. And we know they're oh, growing over tens and tens percent every month. I'm a numbers person, and the numbers that I crunched for this deal, that made sense. What are you going to do? Uh, thank you for your offer, but we will not take it. Thank okay. you much. All right, understand, guys. Thank you take much. it easy. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thanks for coming. Okay. Good pitch. Well done. Wow. Gee, for that extra percent, they should have gone. I should think you were cheap not going down there. <laughs> no. Well, I think you're cheap usually, but I think you were cheaper today. Not going down there. A couple of percent, they could have gone up. No.